Welcome back everybody to yet another interesting session. Today's session is going to talk about the crow foot notation. So now think for a minute and just let me know what do you think a crow foot notation is all about. A crow foot notation is a notation that is used in your entity relationship diagram to represent the cardinality ratio between the participating entities. Now, why crow foot notation? See, when it comes to the entity relationship diagram, there are different ways of showing the cardinality ratio. Of, say, for example, in the previous video, we just saw that we could put the cardinality as just 1n and, and then 1, comma 1m, comma n and so on. That is also a notation. So this crow's foot notation is a popular notation that is being used to represent your ER diagrams cardinality. It is widely adopted notation in the industry that's mainly because of its ease of understanding. So now, why the name crow's foot? It is understood or it is assumed that it's called crow's foot notation because of this representation. Do you see it? It looks like a bird's foot the many relationships. So that is why they are called as crow's foot notation. Now, so we know what is crow's foot notation. It is just to represent the cardinality ratio of your in your entity relationship diagram for the participating entities. And it's called crow's foot because of this bird's legs kind of thing that is there. So now let us get into it and let us see how to use this notation. Are you ready for it? Perfect. So if you come here, when you have this triangle or a bird's legs kind of thing, we call it as many relationships. Okay, so this means like many instances of this entity is participating in this relationship. Now, coming on to the next one. So if my entity has only one of its instances participating in a relationship, then we call it one. And remember in the cardinality ratio video that we had last time, we discussed about min max for each entity. So if each entity, how many minimum instances are participating, how many maximum instances are participating. So if you decide to show that minimum and maximum instances that participate, you will use one of these notations. So if it is zero or many, then zero has this open circle followed by the crow foot. And then zero or one, it is the open circle with the line next to it. If the minimum is also one, the maximum is also one, then you will have this two lines. And if it is one to many, it will be a line and the crow foot. Of course, this will be kind of overwhelming to you to remember these notations. Let us use relevant examples so that you would understand it better. So let's take the tutoring company example again. So when the tutoring company offers lessons, it will offer one-on-one -on -one lessons to the students and also group lessons. Am I correct? So let us see how the cardinality is applied and how crow's foot notation could be used to represent a one-on-one -on -one session between a tutor and a student and a group session between number of students and a teacher. So let us start with drawing the entities first. 
So I have the tutor. Tutor is just the other name of the teacher. And then we have the student. So in one-on-one -on -one session, one tutor will teach how many students? Can you give me the answer? Okay. So one tutor is going to teach one student at a time because it is a one-on-one -on -one session. And one student will be taught by one tutor in that one-on-one -on -one session. So this becomes an example of one-to-one -one relationship. Is this clear to you? Good. So now thinking about the min-max proportion. So in a one-on-one -on -one session, one tutor can teach how many students at a time. Minimum is one and maximum is one. Because when you schedule a one-on-one -on -one session, it is obvious that it's between a tutor and a specific student. So one tutor is going to teach minimum one student and maximum one student. And in the same way, one student can be taught by how many tutors in a one-on-one. -on -one. So if there is a one-on-one -on -one session, it is quite obvious that it will have a tutor assigned. So it is going to be the two ones. Is this clear to you? So this is one and only one relationship for you. Now, coming on to the group session. So let us talk about the same two entities. It is going to be your tutor and the student. But now the perception changes. It's about a group session. So one tutor can teach how many students? Many students, correct? So let me use this cross foot. Now, one student can have how many tutors? So even though it is a group session, there will be only one teacher who will be teaching a group of students. So it is going to be one which is represented by a line. So this is a one to many relationship. Is this clear to you? Very good. Now coming on to the min max. One tutor can teach how many students minimum in a group session. So since it is a group session and it is pre-scheduled, we assume that the tutor will have at least one student. Correct. So then I will put this line here. Now, one student can be taught by how many tutors? One. What is the minimum? One. Correct. So this is going to be one and only one relationship. Whereas from tutor to student, it is one to many, one or many relationship. So this is an example with source one and only one on one side and one or many on the other side. Is this clear? So there is a small correction in this slide. It is not going to be one to many. It is one or many because we are just putting the min and max here. Okay. So now. So with this, we have covered the one and only one and also one are many relationships. And we also covered a simple many relationship and a one relationship. But we have the zero one still pending. So let us think about another example where an instructor teaches a course. Okay, so I need some space on the board. So let me erase it to create some space so that we could discuss more examples. Perfect. So now coming back. Okay, let us talk about an instructor. 
in a college teaching course. Does the C look like an E? It does, right? So let me just change it. Oh my God. Okay. So let us do this and let us put a course here. Okay. So one instructor can teach how many courses. So one instructor can teach many courses, and one course in a college can be taught by how many instructors? So there could be multiple instructors. Am I correct? So in that case, it is going to be many. So this becomes an example of a many-to-many -many relationship. Now let us think about the min-max. One instructor can teach how many courses? So when the instructor is newly enrolled or the instructor is on vacation, he will not be enrolled with any courses. Am I correct? In that case, the minimum is zero. So I represent an open circle. So this means that my instructor can teach a minimum of zero course and a maximum of many course. And one course can be taught by minimum one instructor. Am I right? We need at least one instructor assigned to a course and one course can be taught by many instructors. So this is a many-to-many -many relationship with min-max cardinality represented. Is this clear to you? Okay, great. So these are some examples of your crow's foot notation. I hope you will be clear with that. So just to give you a recap, the crow's foot notation is being used to represent cardinality ratio between participating entities in the entity relationship diagram. And we call it crow's foot because the many relationship has a symbol that looks like a crow's foot with three prongs branching out. And how do you reuse or how do you represent this crow's foot notation? For many, it is this bird's food thing. For one, it is a line. If it is zero or many, it is going to be an open circle with the crow foot. If it is zero or one, it is the open circle with a line. If it is one and only one, then it is two lines. If it is one or many, then it's a line with the crow foot. I believe this is clear to you and I would meet you soon in the next interesting video with an interesting concept to talk about. Hope to see you soon and subscribe to this channel so that whenever I keep adding videos, you'll be notified on it. And if you like this video, please don't forget to like it. Thank you. Hope to see you soon.